Well guys, I hope you're ready for some Dungeons and Dragons. I've been uh, I've been itching to get back into our Curse of Strahd game. Yeah, it's been a while. All right, so after rescuing Kresk's kidnapped children from the dark caverns of the werewolf den and pilfering a cursed treasure hoard and running for your lives through a Barovian winter gale, you guys found yourselves bottlenecked in a narrow canyon, werewolves behind you, werewolves in front of you, impending doom almost certain. You guys kicked off an epic werewolf battle, wielding the recently obtained Sun Sword. Your paladin and his allies stood their ground as the lycanthropes and their canid companions closed in from both sides. Suddenly, Esmeralda Davinier, monster hunter extraordinaire, appeared at the cliff's edge above you and wove some arcane magic to create this massive wall of fire that cut off what appeared to be the leader of the werewolves from the, the core of the fighting. Then she sprang from the shadows to join you guys in defense of the children. The battle was bloody and it waged on, with one child being torn to bits, barred, marzen, bitten by a werewolf going down, paladin administering healing potion to get him back into the fight, and the cleric casting spirit guardians to provide protection against the horde. Stanley responded with his longbow, his hunter's mark guiding every attack and dealing massive damage against these werewolves and wolf companions. Yet the horde pressed their attack under the guidance of their leader. The wall went down. The ranger was knocked unconscious. The cleric followed, her protective spirit guardians disappearing. Esmeralda got her back on her feet with another healing potion, and the cleric started letting loose with a series of scorching rays that began to change the tide of the battle. Furious, the werewolf leader lashed out, at the cleric and dropped her a second time before rema the remaining heroes surrounded and began to unleash an amazing array of attacks. In a last ditch effort to survive, the werewolf leader lashed out with a frenzied attack and then fled into the darkness. The night grew silent. The bodies of fallen wolves and ragged looking humans who previously held the shape of werewolves were strewn about the battlefield. Marzen cast a spell evoking his protective dome that shielded the children from further danger. But concerned about the potential contraction of the werewolf curse through the bites that had been inflicted, the cleric casts cure wounds on the bard and the party, now to include five young children settled in for the night. Esmeralda and Corbin discussed many things around the campfire that night, how the paladin and his companions came by the fabled sun sword, once possessed by Strahd's brother, Sergi. Esmeralda warned Corbin about the sword's power and Strahd's undying desire to recover the sword. Stan, with a little bit of eavesdropping, overheard much of this lore drop after having awoken from his slumber. Now it is mid-morning, cooked wolf meat being passed around to you and the children. Fresh blanket of snow covers the ground, and the magical protection of the tiny hut fades. The children cozy up to the fire, waiting for your direction and a plan. The day is yours, folks. What would you like to do? Esmeralda, do you need to get these kids back to your uh, wagon? Yes, my highest priority now is to get these children to safety. If they're a liability for me until I do, my hope is to get them situated and then continue on my quest. What of you? What is your plan? Well, I imagine we could at least help you get them back to your to your wagon um what do you guys think yeah i think i would like to um make a trip around the perimeter and check for new tracks and um just make sure that we're secure see if there's any um any movement around sure roll a perception check for me and are we um we're mountain terrain is that what we're doing uh i would say it's more now? forest okay either way it's a preferred environment for me right i'd like to um make a wide loop around and just i can see if there's anything new overnight um make sure that we're safe and secure and um see if i can pick up where that uh werewolf leader took off to okay i really chase him but just see if i can see any evidence of um which way he went Okay. Yeah, you do a you do a general scan of the perimeter, walking around as as the rest of the party is having breakfast and discussing what the plans are. 
You do find tracks. Uh, there are a lot of critters in this part of the forest. There are small mammal tracks that are possibly squirrel, maybe some rabbit tracks that you notice. Uh, you do see some canid tracks as well, but they do appear to be of the four-legged variety. Okay. As you search the area where the, the leader of the werewolves disappeared, he actually was able to escape with another werewolf. There were actually two of them that ran off into the darkness. But there's been enough snow since then that you can't, you can't mm -hmm. detect those tracks. They're, they've been fully covered up. Um, Does, for future reference, uh, werewolf is a beast, right? Uh, werewolf is a humanoid. Okay. I'm definitely ready to get out of this valley here. I think if we start heading back to Esmeralda's wagon, I think that's uh, the faster we can get there, is the, the better for us. Yeah, how far yeah. away is it again? Yeah, I agree. We should get out of this place. Well, guys, um, I, I, aside from, um, so aside from Corbin um, being a target with the with the um, Sun Sword, uh, it seems that I'm also going to be a target because what I happened to grab was um, what appears to be Diary of Strahd. Oh, and uh, What? Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of it is not legible. I'm going to have to uh, spend some time looking at it. There could be very valuable information in that book regarding his destruction. Yes, exactly. Um, it, uh, it, the, the part that is immediately legible just tells the story of uh, stuff that we've pretty much already heard, which is, you know, that he, he uh, made a blood oath in order to get a uh, pact of blood with Vampyr and um, in order to um, win, the, win the love of uh, Tatiana and, um, and she... She, her body was never found, but uh, she, she was uh, in great despair because she wanted to marry Sergi, who he killed. And so all of these things were things we knew. I think with some research, I can, I can learn more. And I, I'm guessing that he will very much want this back. So um, I think I'm, I'm right with you um, in that uh, Mars and that we got to get moving because the longer we sit here, the more of a target we become. Hmm. All right, let's get going. I have a question about this book, the passage you read. You told me before that you were in search of Tatiana. <clears throat> Does this change anything? Well, I'm not sure. Um, he, Strahd needs, well, he wants us to bring Tatiana to him. I don't know how that's going to be possible. I don't know um, if, if her soul is being transferred. We don't know if she herself is part of the undead and hiding from him. We don't know um, any of this. Uh, so that's the description, uh, the description he gives for her sounds an awful lot like you. Um, so I don't know if, if, um, reasonable substitute will do, uh, we don't know, uh, but that is what he wants us to bring to him. Hmm. Interesting. The tale of Sergi's murder is one that is known to me. The cursed soul of Tatiana, from what I've been able to gather, is one that is reincarnated over and over again in this land as a, I guess, a distraction and a punishment for Strahd. I wonder if there is a new Tatiana. You've wondered the same thing. This also leads me to curiosity of the letter you delivered to me. Perhaps the one named in the letter has something to do with this. Interesting. She starts packing her things. 
As I'm looking around, I'm trying to find something for us for um, breakfast. See if I can bring any um, any breakfast back. Uh, go ahead and roll a survival check. Uh, roll a d4. There's there's not much growing in this canyon that you're in right now, and with the snow cover, it's pretty difficult to find stuff. But you're able to find enough for one one person's ration for one day, just some berries. Right. Nothing too I, substantial. Um, those to the hungriest looking kid. Thank you, Mister. Are you gonna Welcome keep us kid. safe? Yeah. Stick close, though. Keep what, your eyes open. What are we going to do with Jimmy? And he kind of points over, and there's the dead kid frozen solid. Is there any way to, like, wrap him or cover him? Probably. Yeah, yeah probably. Do you have something in your inventory that you could do that with? A wolf pelt. Got a bedroll. Yeah. You guys have some stuff. A bedroll yeah. would have a blanket in it. Yeah. You've got the wolf pelt. Better than a wolf pelt. Yeah. All right, I'll just use my uh, my blanket to kind of cover him up, roll him up a little bit. And uh, I don't know, how he how heavy is he? <laughs> He's a young boy. He's probably 30 pounds, 35 pounds. Okay. I guess I can carry him out. All right. Or so you um, you throw the I'll bundle the, the bundle of Jimmy over your shoulder. Yeah. I'll take the lead navigating us out to um. To the park. <clears throat> okay, and Esmeralda will join you in in, in the in the at point as well, uh, Stan. And okay. once you guys are all ready and packed up, you and Esmeralda lead the way out of the canyon and back into the forest. Uh, are we. Should probably bring a little bit of the wolf meat with us. Not for um, dinner tonight, anyway. Didn't yeah, we th have some left from before? I'm pretty sure. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's doable. You guys, there was there were plenty of wolves that you just killed the previous night, so some tenderloins off and um, bring them with, and on the trail we go. And I, I need, um, I, I think I might need just a small hunk, not even enough for a meal, just a chunk of it I need for my um, my spell inventory. So if I could have just a little piece of that. Here you go. Thank you. Sweet. Add a chunk of wolf meat to your inventory. <laughs> All right. So the four of you... Esmeralda and five living children, one child, the body of Timmy thrown over Corbin's shoulder. You make your way out of the canyon and into the forest and traveling through the day. Uh, remember you, it is about midday when you get started. So you've got like the full afternoon to travel and eventually you get your way back to a, one of the main roads, the old Svalich road. You emerge from the forest, find yourself on the road again, heading east. Everybody roll a perception, perception check. check. And, and Mara, Mara roll, roll an additional, additional d20, d20 for, for me. me. The snow seems to have let up. The day is cold, crisp, but visibility is good. And you, as you look ahead in the distance, as you're traveling along this road, you don't see any obstructions in, in the distance. You don't see any sort of tracks on the road whatsoever. The fresh snow having covered up any activity from the previous day and previous night. And you make your way down the road most of the, most of the day and it starts to get into nighttime. Uh, Esmeralda stops and says to Stan, we should make camp. I, it's still a ways to my wagon. We should probably make camp here. What do you guys think? We should make camp? Are we? 
We could push on, but we'll we'll be traveling in the darkness. I think uh, we should follow Esmeralda's advice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are you able to do the the, yeah, I'll the take tiny my hut? time and uh, I'll create my tiny hut again. Okay. Um, can you describe what uh, what what the surrounding area is like? Uh, it's forest on both sides of a a narrow wood a, no, a narrow forest road, snow everywhere, thick boughs hanging heavy with snow. And uh, you know a light breeze. It's pretty cold. You can see your breath. And uh, Esmeralda quickly gets a fire started. Stan, you're impressed at how quickly she she gets it going. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to um, cast dark vision for myself. Absolutely. And also, yeah, just dark vision for now. And then I want to make a wide <clears throat> loop around and ask quietly around just to make sure that um, we're pretty secure in a perimeter around the camp. Okay, so you're going to do a perimeter check. Go ahead and... Uh... Perimeter check, and also looking for stuff to eat, stuff to go along with wolf meat. Okay. Roll a survival check and a perception check. And are you trying to move quietly through the woods? Yeah. I'm hunting. I'm... Um... I almost cast Pass Without a Trace, but I'm going to wait until if I see anything, and then I'll do that. All right, roll a stealth check as well, then. There's survival, there's stealth, there's perception. Ooh. All right. Well, the, the forest is thick here, so it's difficult to stealth. You do your uh -huh. best, and probably better than most people would be able to do, but you still <laughs> snap the occasional branch that's hiding beneath the surface of the snow. And you have to kind of crouch down and crawl through a thick underbrush, thorny uh, shrubs that kind of line the, the understory of this thick forest. And as you do, you see tracks of all kinds, all, all sorts of critters running through this part of the forest. But you don't see anything that causes any alarm, which is different from the other times that you've been in the forest, having had a few encounters with, especially with giant spiders in the past. Yeah in this area specifically. Uh, but at this this evening, you don't see anything. Roll a d4 for me. Oh, yeah, it's, it's still really, thing? really hard, but you do find some some additional berries. Right about this time, Marzen, you get the hut up and the children are excited to get inside and warm up. They're starting to get pretty cold. Um, How many of us can fit inside of that hut again? To me, it's pretty roomy. Uh, nine total creatures. So. Oh, okay. So eight plus Marzen. Yep. So one person is going to have to be outside at least at all, at all times, correct? Yep. I, I'm Sorry, okay I'm... with that, Esmeralda says. All right. She gets the fire going, going and kind of gets her area set up, <laughs> eats some of, the, some of the cooked wolf meat that she had from the morning. She doesn't make a big fire. It's it's rather it's rather small, just to keep it from maybe prying eyes that might be around the area. We should definitely set up a watch throughout the night. Yes. I'd be more than happy uh, to take the first watch. All right, I, I'll be happy to take the second. Unless we should do it two at a time. I don't know. I don't I know if that's necessary. Good. Yeah. More important for us to rest. I won't be able to see really cuz uh I don't have dark vision so unless we set up some torches. I don't think we should draw any unnecessary attention by lighting up the forest even more than it is already. Well, then I Yeah. I've got dark vision going. It'll um it would hold for third watch. Okay. Okay. Leap now and between that and um Keeping watch should get my long rest. Wake me up when it's time. Who wants to take right, the fourth we'll watch? Mara, can you take the other watch? I'm sorry. Um, I was I was busy looking at at this tome. Um, who's uh, Esmeralda's going first, and Stanley's going last? Did I hear that Third. right? Yeah. Third? Well, I... I don't know the exact order. I guess I was going to go second. And Esmeralda, then... Corbin, Stan, and then Mara. Yeah. 
is what they're so asking. Okay, the yeah, one. I don't have dark vision either, but if I have the last watch, then at least it'll start to get lightish towards the end of my watch. So, yeah, I can do that. Okay. All right, so the night goes on. Uh, Esmeralda takes the first watch. Somebody roll a d20 for me. Oh. <laughs> can we take scans? <laughs> How many people Who rolled there? I only needed one roll, so we're going to go with yours, Corbin. <laughs> All of a sudden, Corbin, you feel her kick your boot. All right, it's your turn. All it's right. your watch. And uh, she she gets herself situated as you stoke the fire a little bit. Get a little, warm your hands a little bit at the fire. And uh, I'd like you to make a perception check and roll a d20. Okay. Oh, solid roll. Mm. Okay. It uh, it's hard to see into the darkness. It's as you are well aware at the, by this point in the game. It is super dark at night. There's very little moon, almost no stars visible through the thick mists that surround this place. But throughout the night, you hear what you think maybe is a owl hooting in the distance. <clears throat> You're not 100% sure, but nothing alerts you to danger, and your watch comes to an end uneventful. Okay. I'll go wake up, Stan. Hey, it's your turn. Okay, I'm ready. All right, Stan. Uh, perception check and a d20. Oof. Oof. Come on, Stan. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Man. Light. Stan, you have a hard time keeping your eyes open. Uh, you do. You don't fall asleep, but man, you're exhausted. It's almost like a wave of, of just exhaustion comes over you, and it, it's Frickin you're just oh, fighting dear. sleep. I hate this place. Yeah, it's tough. You know, if you, when you can't see sort of like the, the diurnal cycle of the moon and the sun, it kind of yeah. starts to take a toll on you. It's almost like being in some sort of a weird... Gr like consistently gray landscape where yeah, you can't I'm probably thinking about being dead and seeing ghosts yeah and, exactly and just bumming out on watch yeah it's tough but you I'm, uh you make it I'm through gonna... your watch and and uh nothing happens that alerts you to danger yeah I almost woke up Mara a bunch of times on my watch just saying hey I'm lonely out here eventually it comes time to wake her up wake her up excitedly Oh. oh, I was out, man. I was oh, out. Shit, it's spooky out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to this watch. I'll be honest. All of my shield and and uh, and uh, my dagger and my my sword ready to go. So I'll I'll head on out there and see if you can get a few few more moments of shut eye here. Thank you. Mar, you, you throw a couple of sticks on the fire just to keep a little warmth going in the wee hours of the morning. Some, some say the coldest time of night. I'd like you to roll a perception check and a d20 for me. There's a little bit better perception. Okay. Mara, you do hear about an hour into your watch, you hear the distant howl of a wolf. By the sounds of it, it's pretty far away, but okay. it's also deceiving in these parts. It certainly doesn't sound like it was close by, but you but you hear a wolf howling. Um, and and uh, do I have a sense of which direction it's coming from? Coming from the north. From the north. Okay, so I'm going to uh, situate myself so I'm facing the north. I I never got a read on which way the hut was set up and all that but i'm gonna kind of position my body so i'm facing the north and kind of watching that direction okay with my with my back to the hut as best as i can depending on how everything is um situated in our camp you get situated and you you're on kind of like high alert now you know you it, yep. it kind of raised your hackles a little bit and you're dialed in and you see in about an hour from that point just the faint 
reassuring glow of a sun that is so far removed from this realm that it barely reaches the ground, but there is nonetheless a change in the lighting of the landscape. And you start to realize that morning has come. Inside the dome, the children start to grow restless as they sense day coming and everybody starts to wake up inside the dome where it's nice and warm. Eventually, Esmeralda rises. Mara, anything happen? Um, I heard uh, I heard some uh, a wolf, what mm. sounded like uh, from the north. It, it sounded far, far away or I would have woken somebody up, but uh, just been on extra alert since I heard that and haven't heard anything else since. Well, we should break camp quickly and move on as, as fast as we can. As I mentioned to Corbin yesterday, I would like to get rid of these children, if you know what I mean, so I don't have to worry yeah. about them so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm going to go inside the hut and pack up my stuff because I, I had left it inside the hut. I'm going to pack that up and get all situated get the kids, make sure they're as bundled up as they can get, and uh, let's get some food in them and get on the road. Thank you. They're very grateful. They, they seem to have calmed, calmed down, down after, after a, day a day of traveling, traveling and, being, and being even a day, even a day removed, removed from their from captivity. captivity. You can start, you can start to see that they're, they're, they're brightening, they're brightening up, a up a little bit. I want to I wanna go out in front, of, in front of where we're going, where we're going and... and um, I can make sure can it's make clear, sure it's clear to, uh, to uh, sweep, around, sweep around to see if I can, see if I can find anything, anything to, um, to um, supplement our rations. Our rations. Okay. And, uh, and uh, well, during breakfast, during breakfast I, want I want to talk to, to one talk of the older children, children a little bit, if I can. If I can. We have a chance, have a chance to, do that. to do that. Sure, sure. Uh, Stan, um, go Stan, ahead and go ahead and a, a uh, perception check and a survival check for me. Nice. Yeah, you you don't see any wolf tracks or anything like that. There's nothing on the perimeter that suggests that anything came with, within any sort of proximity to your camp. Okay. Uh, you do find some, almost like the, the mother load of berries. Excellent. And you find four days worth of rations for one person if they were just eating berries. So it's quite a few berries. All right. Back to breakfast, Mara. You sit down next to a couple of the children. On your left, there's a small boy who is tearing at some of the wolf meat with his hands. His face is dirty. On your right, there's a, an older girl, kind of blonde, stringy hair. She's got a scarf wrapped around her head and then wrapped around her neck as well. And she's got this kind of thick, dirty green, almost like a anorak styled cloak. And she's also eating wolf meat next to you with her hands, just kind of tearing at the meat. Uh, hi, um, I'm Mara. What's your name? Uh, my name's Lenore. Lenore, um, I know this has been really hard, but it's going to help us if you, if if you help, if if you help, it's going to help us help you if you can tell me a little bit about what happened and how you ended up in the cave. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, when, when we left Kresk with my family, we were trying to make it to Valakai, where, where we, we knew we could be safe there, but we didn't make it there, and our camp was overrun in the night, and I ran into the woods, as my father told me to do with some of the other children, and we waited. We waited for a long time, and my father never came to get us. But eventually, the hunters did. These men and women came and, and got us, and took us. And they took us to Where that did cave. They... So hunters came and got you and took you to the, to the cave? They weren't wolves that you took, took you there? The ones you killed in the cat in the canyon, some of them were there. So when they came to get you in the in the in the forest, were they were they human or were they 
or were they wolf? They look like humans. But that's the thing with with these werewolves is that they can change back and forth. Did any of them uh, scratch or bite any of uh, any of you children that are sitting here with us? I I don't know. I'm not bit or scratched, but they I overheard some of them talking about eating us or having us join their group. I don't know what that means, but neither of those options sounded particularly great. Well, we're going to do our very best to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, who, who all was in the cave besides the hunters and the wolves? Was there anybody else that came or went? I don't know. It's hard to remember. We were locked in those little cages for days. I don't know. I didn't see anybody but that woman in the cave who you, your friend killed. The one that could cast magic. She was with us quite a bit. She was one of the nicer ones, but I don't know. They all kind of blur into one if you know what i mean mm -hmm. how many ki how many children originally were were in the ki were were with the group there were eight of us originally okay we lost is there anything two in the is there... escape and one in the canyon jimmy so there was nobody that was lost while you were in the cages no. And they kept you there for days. That's interesting. Not good, but interesting. Um, is there anything, anything peculiar that you remember at all about your time with, with the, the wolves in the cave, on the way to the cave, any of that? Well, Seemed like they fought a lot. You know what they were arguing and fighting about? I don't. Did they say any names or places that you remember? No. Hmm. Interesting. Lenore, I really, really appreciate everything you said. Well, thanks um, to for me. saving us. Well, we're, we're still we're still working hard for that. So you, you kids are going to have to move as quickly as we can through the woods. I know you're really tired and your legs are not as long as ours, but we're going to do our best today to get you to someplace safe. Walk by and give her some berries and say, um, here you go. Here's some fuel for the road. Let's get ready to move. Thanks, mister. Mara, roll a persuasion check with advantage. Nice. Yeah, you see with your sort of pep talk at the end there that the uh, Lenore seems to sort of, her spirits seem to raise her posture changes a little bit, a little bit more of a um, shoulders kind of up rather than hunched over. And you can tell that she's got a little bit of a little bit of energy that she didn't have before that, along with the berries and stand contributing really helped lift her spirits. And so you see her over the next half day or so, a couple hours where she's helping the other children. She's really keeping everybody together and she takes on this sort of motherly role throughout the rest of the travels. Awesome. So with that, you guys gather your things after getting a quick meal and make your way continuing forward into, uh, well, in an easterly direction and Halfway through the day, you reach a spot that looks familiar to you, and Esmeralda mutters a few words, and suddenly you see this beautiful, though well-worn, wagon appear at the side of the road. And she hurries towards it. 
and you see that she kind of pushes a couple of panels on the side of the, the wagon. You've seen her do this before. And the main door of the wagon kind of pops open. And she says, Well, I will take the children from here and get them to safety as best I can. I know you have a quest that you're following, Paladin. We should try to rendezvous at some point. Our paths are aligned to some extent, although we both have things that we need to accomplish before we can press the final goal of our adventure. Come, children. And she, uh, she beckons and the children start getting into the wagon. Uh, I raise a voice quietly to the group as she's um, distracted working to get him in the cart. Um, hey, are we really going to cut the kids loose and let him go with her? Should we... I mean, she was the reason the whole we group? went and got them. Yeah, I, 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 think, uh, I think she's proven herself more than more than plenty. Yeah, that seem, that wagon seems like a pretty safe place to be out here. Yeah, I kind of wish weren't. I could go into that wagon. <laughs> yeah. You aren't nervous for the kids that uh, she'll treat them well and get them where they need to go? Yeah. Not at all. She's a legendary Esmeralda, a monster hunter. I think Marzen's got a crush on Esmeralda. <laughs> Maybe. And I'm gonna, I'm, I, I kind of nudge you in the ribs a little bit with my elbow. Right. Um... <clears throat> Question is, uh, do we know where to go? Esmeralda mm. overhears you and saying, "Where, where do you travel to next?" Well, when we came across you, we were heading towards the city with the witches. Oh, Perez. Perez, thank you, thank you. Yes. Well, I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, Berez is a very dangerous place, from what I understand. I've not been there, but I tread lightly. Well, we really don't know where else we, we could go at this point. I mean, we have things that we need to get done, and, and Berez seems like the next place where we need to go. Right. Like you, uh, we have... We have a mission of sorts. Do we have a good idea of which direction to head to get there? Um, I, I started to I started to do a map and I don't have Berez on it. So I'm so Esmeralda, are we pointed in the right direction? You know where we're headed? Yes. Well, if you're trying to get to Berez, you're going to travel to the Luna River Crossroads. Before crossing the Luna River, there is a, a road that heads south. There's a road that heads north there, too, but a road that heads south following the Luna River as it descends towards Berez. So it's about half a day's journey from here to the crossroads. Okay. And, and is that as far as Barovia and Tister Falls, or is that before that area? Oh, well before. Okay. Half a day's journey. Uh, okay. it, it's before Valakai. Okay. We're probably, I don't know exactly where we are on a map, but I, I would say that we're approximately a day and a half from Valakai, west of Valakai. Barovia okay. and Tisser Falls are on the far eastern end of this valley, yep. many days away, and past the Castle okay. Ravenloft. I will head right. north to a place where I believe these children will be safe until we can figure out what's happening in Valakai. There is a stronghold on the shores of Lake Baratok. After you've taken care of what you need to take care of and you're ready to press the advance on the devil, find me there. We will prepare and travel together to Ravenloft. Where was this stronghold? What lake did you say it lake was? Lake Baratok, to the north. Baratok? North of Valakai? No. When you get to the Luna River crossroads, you're going to head south to Berez. To get to Lake Baratok, you'll head north. Right. That's what I was wondering. But is Lake Baratok 
uh, north of Valakai. No, it's not. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, you must be thinking of Lake Zarovich. Yeah, that must be it. <clears throat> it's a much so smaller can... lake than Lake Zarovich. Okay. So should we all travel together to the crossroads? I will head west here. It'll be faster. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you don't have any. I happen to have any extra arrows on board, do you? I'm a little I'm bit short. Afraid I don't. I gave you everything I had. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that Jimmy was that his name? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if Esmeralda has a spare blanket or tarp or something we can wrap him in so I can have my blanket back. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, of course. She pulls out some blankets from a cabinet underneath the wagon, and she unwraps Jimmy from his current bundle and rebundles him, and then ties him to the top of the wagon. Yeah. She climbs up onto the wagon in the driver's seat, and she says, I wish you the best of luck if you should make it to Lake Baratok. I will be there waiting for you. I hope we see you. I hope we see you soon. And then with a quick command word, she says, Drovash! And you suddenly see these sort of ethereal-looking draft horses apparate in front of the wagon, and they're attached to the wagon. And she just gives another command word, and they start walking off to the west. We gotta get ourselves some of those horses. Just like that. That's pretty slick. Let's get rolling, guys. Yeah, we should get moving. It's getting late again. Yep, I'm ready to slay these witches. <laughs> Alright, you guys continue on for a couple more hours before the light starts to wane. And the road comes to a cross intersection, branching to the north, the east, the south, and the west from where you've come. The lower half of a wooden signpost thrusts upwards at an angle near the eastern elbow of the intersection. The top half of the sign features arms pointing in four directions. And you see clearly a arrow and an engraving that says Berez, directing you to the south. Well, plain as day. Yep. This is the, the direction we go. Let's go. Yeah, let's let's keep moving. All right. But is it's not dark yet, is it? Uh, it's just it's getting close for sure. It's getting close. You have probably got another another hour maybe of daylight. Right. Yeah, let's, let's get as far as far as we can and then get set up, huh? Yeah, let's head south a little bit, not yeah. just so we're not camping right in the crossroads. Yeah. I don't think that's yep. a good spot. Nope. Yeah, good, good idea. So maybe like we'll head like half an hour south and set up our camp. Okay. I think. And yep. Sounds Dave, good. We're in um, forest or mountain? Forest. Okay, forest. I would like to take the lead, travel <clears throat> off trail, and um look to forage as um, looking for tracks. Okay. Uh, roll a perception check and a survival check for me. And then roll a d20. Perception. Survival. Nice. 20. Okay. Yeah, you you find uh, a bunch of berries again. As you head south from the crossroads, the, the snowfall, the snowpack starts to dwindle as you descend in elevation. And so it's not as thick and um, as the ground's not as blanketed. So you do find some little green herbs that also okay. provide you with uh, some food, some forage. So you find, uh, you find about six days worth of rations uh, for one person based on berries and, and some herbs. You don't catch the sound or the tracks or any sign of any animals in this area. Good, bad, or ugly, huh? Correct. The four of you 
continue solid for half an hour to 45 minutes and the night uh, is drawing close so you set up your camp and you're sitting around the fire eating berries and herbs and whatever wolf yeah. meat you have still left share the whole lot with the crew so have you looked into the tomb of Strahd a little bit more mara have you found anything else so yeah, um, I, I really didn't have a chance to take a look because we were so pressed getting the kids going, but um, I do want to talk to you about it, but I want to do it inside the hut, not out here. That's probably a good idea. Um, out of character, can we stand watch inside the hut? Yeah, like we can for still sure. hear everything, right? Yeah. Okay. I Let's don't know if I'd sure. say everything. I would yeah. say that it probably has some impact, but you can definitely see through it. Except for, unless it's dark, then you would not be able to see through it with dark vision. The spells don't pass through it. Oh, that's oh, right, man. yeah. So magical right. magical dark vision wouldn't work. But regular dark vision would? Like mm, racial yes. dark vision? Yeah. Okay. I, w I would, I, what I think we should do is try to, I know we can't do it perfectly, but I think if we are able to... Um, douse this fire and cover our tracks as very best we possibly can and go in all of us go inside the hut we can have a chat about this I could um, cast pass without a trace and we could totally slink into the hut well I'll be in the hut because when I cast it I'm already in it so yeah I guess I mean if you think we need to do that tonight I'm all for yeah, it I yeah, I think we should just have a talk about it before we go any further, just so everybody's on the same page, so to right. speak. Yeah, definitely. All right, so Marzen is is able to get the hut established, no problem. You guys all go in there. Stan, are you going to cast Pass Without a Trace, it looks like? Yep, I am. Okay, so you guys are able to essentially walk across the snow, the what little snow there is, uh, without leaving any sort of tracks whatsoever. You are now inside the hut. So what did you find, Mara? Well, here's this is the book, and I'll give you a description of it. Um, the book is bound in thick leather cover with steel hinges and fastenings. The pages appear to be handcrafted sheet of, sheets of thin parchment and brittle to the touch. The tome is filled with a mixture of ciphers, diagrams, and notes written in a curious shorthand. Stains and age have made most of the pages illegible, but, but some of the first section is readable. And um, and the the and then the and then it proceeds with the passage about about it, but it's uh, basically telling the uh, the story uh, of Strahd from his point of view, um, which he he had uh, he had gone he had come to the land um, with his army, and uh, they took the took the power over the people in the name of a just god not with any of the gods grace or justice and then he called for his family um who had been unseated from their ancient thrones and brought them there to settle and in ravenloft and uh his younger they brought with his, his younger brother and he had never known sergey um apparently came after he had left and he was handsome and and this tatiana was in love with him and they were supposed to be married um, she, he, he was in love with her, but she thought he was old and thought of her as a brother and an elder. Um, she was in love with the younger brother and, uh, he thought it was because he was really old and he, and because he was dying and close to dying. So that's when he made the deal with Vampyr and, um, and became undead. And, uh, she, in, in her, he went to find her. She was mourning his brother, and she ran away, and never she he never got a chance to explain to her what he had done and why he had done it for her, and and uh, he chased her, and she flung herself from the walls of Ravenloft, and her body was never found, and he searches he continues a search for her, so that that this is all stuff we've heard most of this before, um, but I think there's more in this book. Um, that you know we can we can look at, and um, Dave, here's where I need to ask you some some just some mechanical questions. I'm not sure about. Mm -hmm. um, 
the 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 description about the user effects, the hidden secrets. Once attuned to this item, um, am I right in assuming that because I took the book, I am attu automatically attuned to this item? It doesn't happen automatically, but if you take time, uh, either a short or long rest, to examine it and page through it, you would have become attuned to it. So at this point, you are yes. Okay, and um, and. Can anybody else be attuned to it? Like if I gave it to Marzen to review? Possibly, you don't know. Okay. Um, so I feel, I feel, I don't know. I, I feel kind of, I feel powerful while I have it in my possession um, in a in a strange way, not in a evil or bad way, but just I feel like it gives me, I don't know, something makes me less afraid of Strahd somehow, and I can't explain why. But there's Mars. more But there's more here to look at um, that's it, it, going to take some, some, some looking at and, and sitting with it for quite some time. Marzen being the, the researcher that he is, he's really intrigued to it too. Uh, yeah. Would it be possible for me to look <laughs> over it, everyone, or some time too? Say, yeah. The more we can spread it around, the better off we'll all be. Well, kind of like a chance this... to look at it too. Yeah, and, and I I don't know what it. Uh, I, I I don't know, guys. I I I'd like to look at it first. I'm not telling right. you you can't, but I'd I'd like to review it before I I hand it off. Um, we don't know what kind of, I don't know magic this holds and and if there's any kind of bad effects i i want to find out about it before i hand it to anybody else right and just out of character like anybody that's good at intelligence intelligence checks like investigation checks is probably going to be better at it just fyi yeah yeah i don't um not uh, saying Dave, you have to give it away <laughs> right, well right dave do dave dave can they see the tome of strad notes uh, or is it just me? Yeah, they should be able to. Yeah. Everybody okay. has I didn't, access to I, it. I didn't know if you could yeah. see it or not. That's yeah, why so, I was being You know, evasive. you shared with them the story uh, that you were able to read. So that's in there if they want to read it in more detail. So they can see the mechanics and the user effects. Okay. So so guys, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, um, I think I think tonight. Uh, during my watch, I'm going to I'm going to look at it and see if there's anything else that I can find out. All right. And we're pretty obscured right here and right now, so you yeah. could probably get away with um, putting a little well, extra perception on reading rather than purely watching because we're pretty well hidden, I think. Yeah, I'll, if it's okay with all of you, I'd like to take the first watch while I'm uh, awake and alert to look this over. All right. Go right. on second, Andy. Uh, yeah, I can go second. I don't, I don't mind. And Mars, and you want third? I'll take fourth. Uh, sure. I'll just uh have to be ears because I won't be able to see at night. Yeah, me too. Okay, so. You get settled in, everybody slips off to sleep except for Mara taking the first watch. Mara, you're gonna have to sort of make a decision on if you're gonna spend time with the tome, Your mm -hmm. watch, that's gonna impact your ability to watch, just so you know. So go yeah. ahead and roll, is that what your plan is? Is to, is to essentially do some studying? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I want to uh, look at, at one of the one of the notes Got that are is referred to in in the in the description here okay so and go ahead and see, roll... see what i can find out <laughs> go ahead and roll an investigation check nice dang nice. that's pretty sweet wow. that was a great roll yeah it was yeah nice job all right i just dropped a, a message in there for you uh, and then I need you to, before you read that, give me a, a perception check at disadvantage. Still uh -huh. pretty good. And then roll a d20 for me. Okay. 
you uh, you find some interesting information in the cryptic code of this tome. This strange shorthand gives it provides you with some insight into Strahd's powers and the basis for his power. Meanwhile, you still are able to maintain a pretty decent watch, and throughout your watch, you don't you don't happen to uh, to notice anything that causes you alarm, which is welcome because you're busy studying. You will, uh, the, for the following day, take a level of exhaustion. So yeah. just keep that in mind. On future ability checks, they will be at disadvantage. Um, um, yeah, that's the end of your watch. I, I, I do have, um, except except if if I were to run into Strahd, then then the bearer of Strahd's truth would would trump that, correct? Uh, having, having advantage on saving throws for it, him. It would, uh, well, saving throws are not an ability check, so it wouldn't affect, it's not going to affect saving throws. Okay. It just affects, abil affects ability checks. Okay. All right, so that's the end of your watch. And you wake Corbin up for his watch, I'm assuming. Yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah, I'm up, I'm up. I hope, we, I hope you found some good stuff in there. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking on it. <laughs> All right. All right, okay, Corbin, you, you get settled yep. in. Go ahead and roll a perception check and a d20. Okay. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's it's very different being on watch inside the dome versus the previous night where you were sitting by the fire. Um, but you don't detect anything nefarious at hand, and your watch comes to an end. All right. Unless there's anything that you want to do during your watch. Um, no, I can't think of anything right now. Okay. Oh, was it Marzen Stanley? Oh, Marzen. Okay, I'll wake up, Marzen. Hey, wake up! It's your turn. I uh, see anything? No, no, I didn't see anything. Well, oh, shit, doesn't look like I'm gonna either. <laughs> Start the shit out there. All right, well, if I hear anything, I'll, I'll kick you. Yeah, kick me. I have, I can see. So, if something, you hear something off? Let me know. All right, we'll do. Get some rest. All right. All right, Marzen. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check and a d20. Nice. Not bad for not being able to nice. see. It's tough. I mean, even with an amazing perception roll, the fact that you don't have night vision and just sort of the lack of illumination from having no moon showing, no starlight, you're not sure, really. You don't feel super confident in your watch. But at the same time, you don't see anything explicitly dangerous come into view and your watch passes without any problems. All right. I'll wake up Stan. Hey Stan, it's uh, time for your watch. All right, finally. Yeah, it's been pretty quiet, so I, I, I okay. can't see much, but yeah. You've, you've been reading that book? Anything good in there? Uh, no, I was, since I couldn't see, I was concentrating on trying to hear everything. And and I took it to bed with me. I just, okay. so you know. She's got one arm wrapped over it. It's I do. Pillow. It's her pillow. <laughs> it is. I don't, I don't want it that close to my head. <laughs> right, I think I'm going to go outside for my watch. I'm going to leave the dome. Okay. What are you going to do while up? you're outside? Uh, I'm going to stick fairly close to the dome so I can jump back in if I need to, but I want to be able to see, so I'm going to set up a watch um, close by, slip outside, and find some kind of cover, some sort of, um, kind of like a deer blind. 
where I can see, but have a little cover and people can't see me. All right, roll a perception check, a stealth check, and a d20 for me. And how are you dressed? Uh, I still got all of my stinky furs on. I'm dressed for um, cold. Okay. And d20. Ah, oh, come on, Stan. And did you use, uh, did you cast night vision or no? Yeah, I casted night vision before I went in. Okay, so that would and, still be active? Yeah, but pass without a trace, I think, is an hour, so that's gone. Okay. I'll leave some tracks, but I'll try to be direct as to um, where I go out of the hut. Okay. Yeah, with your enhanced vision, you're able to find a pretty decent blind, probably 15, 20 feet from the dome. All right, and I got my bow. I'm um, hunting as well as being on watch. I'm keeping an eye out for um, rabbits or grouse or something that I can shoot for breakfast. Okay. Roll a percentile d uh, dice for me. Percentile dice? Yeah, uh, go over to the dice roller and there's a D100. Click on the D100. It's been a quarter. Okay, yeah, it's, it seems as though there's just not much game in yeah. this section of the forest, and you don't see anything, but you do see the, the gray of the sky start to lighten just a little bit, suggesting that day has, has arrived. And the, the rest of your team wakes up at this point, and the dome starts to fade. You're about a half an hour south of the Luna River crossroads, headed towards Berez. We all got long rests, so we get... Everybody um, got a long rest, yep. We all get fully recuperated. Yep. Hey, Stan, you're past without trace. Uh, how long does that last for? Uh, I think it's an hour. Once we see Berez, I, I think we need a... Yeah. Do well, it, because we're going to go in which territory? Is okay. Brez actually like a town? He said it's like runes, I think. That's... As we I get know, into Brez, just... I would really like some arrows, so you guys keep in mind we're on um, arrow watch. I need some more. What are you down you to? to, learn how to? You need to learn how to make some, pal. How many do you have left, Stan? I got um, eight, I think. Oh, wow. Oof. Any of those silvered? Yeah, three of them are silver, five are without. Wow. Arrow watch, please. Great job on uh, keeping track of your inventory on arrows, by the way. Appreciate that. Yes. All right, so. So, so guys, before we really hit the road, um, I'm not sure, but... Um... I, I, I kind of, I, I was able to cipher out at least one of these notes and it sounds like, that, it sounds like Strahd got, got, um, got a lot of his knowledge and, and about the land um, from, from some tomes that he got from the Amber Temple. So we're, we, this is now a, another, another reference to the Amber Temple. And um, it also, it says, it refers to, I visited the three fanes and claimed their power for my own. Their servants now serve me, thus I become the land. And every time he, he writes land so far, land is capitalized. So he is very much of and around and in and just part of this land, which, you know, would be makes sense with this ever ever loving mist that's making us all crazy um so but the three fanes i i didn't somebody didn't didn't somebody mention that there were three three witches or three somethings in in, mm. in berez wasn't that like the huntress yeah maybe maybe yeah you're right kind of just i'm kind of trying to piece all this together but jenny, um, i think jenny green was talking about that yeah yeah she was she was anyway so although although this this book 
you know, I, it makes me feel, I don't know, like I have a bit of an inside track, if you will, on Strahd. I, 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 I feel, I feel tired. I don't feel quite right today. So I don't think anybody else should look at this at least for a while until I can, until I see what, what this, how this unfolds. Well, if it's, if it's affecting you anyway, I, I think you should hold off on reading it until we yeah. dealt with these witches. I agreed. Agreed. I just don't want any of you to, to, for it to affect any of you. So I'm going to put it in my bag. And um, actually I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it underneath my, my armor and uh, bury it that way because I, I don't want to, don't think it'd be a good idea for, for it to, he parted from me. Okay. Right? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So if anything should happen to me, you know where to find it. It's underneath my armor. Right. Okay. Let's go. Let's roll. All right. So the four of you continue south. And you have some time. I don't know if, Marzen, you were, you were kind of getting into a discussion on strategy a little bit. So you have time as you're walking to to continue that if you want to otherwise um i need we'll, we'll move on to the next step um just was gonna try to be quiet try to i think stan's really good at scouting out so if we yep i'll take the lead and i'm gonna wander off the side of the trail looking for um straight um straight sticks for arrow shafts i can um collecting some raw materials for making more arrows okay um what's the what's the marching order on the trail you've got stan in the front yeah i can go second corbin yeah corbin yeah, corbin okay i'll go i'll go next yep. okay then mars and have mars and rear. Rear. okay stick fairly hey. close together hey guys guess what I, I I talked a little bit to Esmeralda over breakfast, and and I think I might be able to do that that wall thing that that uh, I think she she told me how to do that that um that wall spell that wall of fire spell that flame wall she created when we were fighting the werewolves yeah oh, that was yeah. awesome Whoa. yeah, that, yeah I, that was... I I I think I can I think the way she explained it to me I think I think I can do it with this. I got this. Uh, that's why I asked for the wolf flesh for. So I'm kind of. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. If 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 it comes to that. Don't burn Mars in again. <laughs> I, I, uh, I won't. <laughs> Thank you. That that really helped during that fight though, because um, yeah. she separated that lead that head the head werewolf from us. Yeah. Um, let us fight the other ones for a little bit. <clears throat> that's great yeah I think um, we should head south but um, I don't know didn't we hear from Jenny that it was about a day south to Berez that's that sounds... uh, too long for me to remember um, sounds about right says, from what you remember mm -hmm. yeah head south mm -hmm. About a day, then we'll find Berez. We asked her for tips for witches, and she said, "Stay away from them." <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yeah. So, see, look. See, look how good we listened. <laughs> yeah. I say, you know, as we get towards the end of the day today, um, I don't know if we're going to need to camp again before we get there, but maybe as the day goes on, we'll we'll start to get more and more cautious. Agreed. All right. A nightfall. It'd be a good time to um, end a town. All right, so I guess we pack up and hit the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Arson, you're a pretty good strategist. Do you got any ideas as we're moving this way? Yeah, I'll stay in the hut and you guys go retrieve the bones. <laughs> I'm, I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> um. No, I, I could go invisible, so, or, uh... We can do pass the other place. 
Dan, you're pretty quiet, so I, I think here, here's a good game plan. Is uh, if we find them, um, I will make you go invisible, and you got for like one minute. So be very quiet and try to get the bones and get out. Oh, you can pass invisible on me. Yep. All right, invisible. Carson, you've been practicing. Yeah. That should come in useful. I only got one go at it, though, and it's only going to last for about a minute, so. I think if we distract him, it might buy you some extra time. <laughs> one thing we could do is maybe set a fire out in the, the forest to see if it draws their attention once we find them. Big fire. Well, you know, well, I could. What I could do is, I could, I could do like a sacred flame with some thaumaturgy and just like make a lot of noise and light all at once, and that might, you know, draw, draw them away towards, yeah. <laughs> toward, towards me. <laughs> yeah, I think a fire might be better rather than put our ourselves in more danger. You mean then, like uh. A decoy as we start to get closer. Yep. So if we if we, if we could see them or we could tell where the the town's out, I would say we see the ruins or whatever it is. Um, we set a fire, then go around, then okay. uh, that way, hopefully, they go to investigate it. Then while while we look for uh, the bones. If we could do it kind of like a op mission and be quiet about it, it would be the best. <laughs> Isn't that always the best? <laughs> All right, let's. We should keep moving, though. I, I'm. I was assuming that we were wa moving this yeah, whole time. I was too. Yeah, okay. you guys are right. walking and talking at this Just point. Just making sure. <laughs> All right. So as you continue you start to notice that the snow-covered landscape transitions into this wet, swampy sort of lowland area as the banks of the Luna River have swollen to such a great extent that in some places it almost threatens to swallow the, the road that you're traveling on. Your feet start to stick in the mud a little bit as you're continuing to walk down this trail. And you hear... What, something that you haven't heard for a while is you've got this sort of drone of insects that you can hear in the distance and along the river bank. And sometimes you get a bug in your face and they, and they kind of come swarm in at you and you're able to brush them away. Um, but you definitely get the sense that you're descending into this boggy area along the banks of the Luna River. Everybody roll a perception check for me. Nice. Everybody except for Marzen, as you're walking along, having been finished your conversation, you've been walking in silence for a little ways, you hear what can only be best described as the sounds of a battle up ahead. But the I'm fog has grown. Shafts as I'm going to. What's that? I'm looking for arrow shafts as I'm going. Oh yeah, you're in the woods, right? Roll a survival check. Yeah, you're able to find a couple of, of branches that seem pretty straight. That Many. you could potentially you roll a, um, yeah, roll a roll a d4. Yeah, you find two. All right. So you break them off. Noted. Yep, and put them in your Whack pack. Them with my short sword. Yep. All right, so the four of you are walking as I was um, getting into, and everybody except for Mars and hears what can be only best described as the sounds of a battle up ahead. But the fog has grown so thick that you can barely see more than 30 to 40 feet in any direction. Guys, hear that? No, I think you're hearing stuff. 
Stanley, do you hear that? Yeah, I hear something. I hear bugs for sure. It's warming up. It's becoming more and more hospitable all the time. Suddenly the fog around you takes on forms of soldiers on horseback charging across a field. Oh shit. They Watch collide with armor down. pike bearing wearing devil horned helms. And soldiers start to fall in battle. There's a, a massive amount of bloodshed on this field as you watch these cavalrymen being cut down by these yeah, pike bearing men. Cover. And as each soldier falls in the battle, it turns back into mist. And the mist starts to swirl around you and this field along the banks of the river. The battle continues as swarms of soldiers converge on this area screaming, yelling, the clash of metal, men falling on the battlefield and being absorbed again into the mists that are swirling, ever swirling around you like a cauldron. Anybody shooting arrows? You don't see any arrows being shot. And this is all, this is all near us, but... Or, it's in or and around you. It's just everywhere yeah. around you. You're in the middle of it. And, but it's all just mist. Yeah. Is it a real battle, or is it a spectral battle, or is it um, actual things, or is it weird memories? And Roll an investigation thing. check, Stan. I was going to say, could I investigate the armor of the two? Sure. Stan, you're not sure. It's like, it, it's hard to hard to even fathom what this might be. Um, same with you, Mars, and you, you don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of a battlefield. And... Are there any bodies at our feet, like near us? Nope. Hey, Stan, I think it's time to do Pass Without Trace. I think yeah, we're getting yeah. closer to All what right. this is. Good time to blend in. I mean, should we fall back a little bit and see if we can go around this? I don't know. Well, we're kind of silent now. Yeah, what if what if this is uh, all around it? I mean, we can't. I think we continue on the line with Pass Without a Trace. Lasts for an hour. As you guys are talking, you hear a thunderous roar. <laughs> and seconds later, you see this huge dragon made of silver mist that glides overhead, dispersing enemy soldiers with each flap of its mighty wings. <laughs> Its long reptilian tail slices through the air above you as it, the dragon carves a swath through the fog, affording you a fleeting glimpse of a road ahead of you. Then disappearing into the mist again. Let's get think, out of here. I, All right. think our, I, think, I think that was our friend from, um, from Argenvost Holt. Let's Argen move. Vols, yep. It was Argenvost. I... Yeah. Roll an investigation check, Corbin. Okay. I was going to say, yeah. You can roll one as well, Mara, if you want. Is that investigation? Correct. It's hard to say, but yeah, the only dragon you've heard of in these parts is Argenvost. And you get the sense, the fact that you're in the middle of this battlefield, yet there's no physical contact as these almost apparition-like soldiers move through you and around you and fall in front of you, yet no bodies anywhere but you can plainly see the battle taking place and hear the, the words and the, the sounds of battle. It just doesn't seem, it almost seems like it's, it's a strange theater of the mind being played in front of you. I think, our, I think it, it's possible that, that our witchy friends might be playing some games with us. Should we head towards that road we saw? Yeah, let's down, go. Further down, down the road. road. Yeah. Further down the road. I, I assumed we were already walking that way. Let's go. Yeah, you're on the road, and at this point, the, the forest has receded, and you're in this very marshy area. Let's go ahead. Let's take a quick break. It's 8.22. Let's start back up at 8.30. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So Sounds like you're drawing up a map. A battle <laughs> map. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Time of day is it? We're getting into dusk. Yeah, it's coming towards the end of the day. Maybe like, well, maybe not the end of the day, but it's like probably 4 p.m. Yeah. 
you know, mid-afternoon. Witching hour. Sweet. All right. We'll see you guys back in seven minutes. So you, you pass through this strange battleground and as you leave the sort of these weird warriors that have been, it almost looks like they've taken on the shape of the mist and the mist has taken on the shape of these warriors and there's a strange battle going on, but you, you continue moving, getting the, the sense that this is some sort of a strange apparition. And you continue heading south. At this point, the landscape is, is wet and soggy. And your feet are sinking into above your ankles. And the terrain is getting more and more difficult to traverse at a normal pace. Are you still uh, in marching order, Stan, Corbin, Mara, Marzen? Yeah, I'm still in the lead. I'm still watching for um, yeah, that's fine with arrows me. that I can use. All right. Uh, Stan, roll a perception check. And everybody roll a stealth check. Ooh, the rear is being stealthy. Because I'm hiding be behind four bodies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Stan, as you are moving stealthily along, and you have, you've cast Pass Without a Trace as well, so you guys all have an additional plus 10 to that, that score. Okay. Uh, so keep that in mind. That lasts for up to no. one hour, as long as Stan concentrates on it. And Mara, you would actually be at disadvantage, so why don't you roll one more time? You still get to add the plus 10, but... Oh, so oh, we'll go with no. the first roll. So you, yeah. you're good. Aren't you glad you asked? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Stan, up ahead, as you're continuing down this muddy path, you take a step forward and your foot goes into about the top of your boot and you get water in your boot. You look oh, out deep up here. You look out in the mist ahead of you and you get the feeling that you can make out some sort of a shape. It's hard to tell what it is because of the mists obscure the shape, but you see something ahead of you on the road. All right. Um, you guys hold here. I'm going to go up and investigate. To the Probably. left of you is the river, which is swollen. The banks are swollen, and it, it the river kind of laps up against the road itself. Uh, to the right of you is this open marshland, and then there's the road that goes right down in between those two. All right, I'll take the um, right side, the little bit less soggy way, and work to um, go up and investigate what I see. Okay, so you're going to go off the road into onto the right side? Yeah. Okay, so it's definitely not less soggy. It's very soggy. Go ahead and roll a new stealth check at disadvantage. You still get the pass without a trace. Roll oh, well, Stan. That's pretty well. And you're going to be moving nice. at uh, at half speed because of the difficulty of moving through this, this is, wet, but muddy... But it is one of my favorite environments. Uh, this is Swampland. This is not, oh, okay. not one of your favorite environments, actually. This is probably one of your least favorite environments. You get a little bit closer to the shape, and you see a cart uh, with two women sitting on the cart. The cart is stopped in the road. It appears as though the two women are having a conversation. The cart is facing in your direction. It's not the cart, the same cart that we just left behind. It's a different cart, right? It's a different cart. It's a much smaller, very plain wooden cart. Two women sitting at the reins. There is a what appears to be some sort of a draft animal attached to the front of the cart. 
but it's hard to, it's hard to make out on any details at this distance you're probably 30 feet away you could get closer if you want to no i think i want to double back cross the road and come back on the left side of the road okay the go ahead and roll another uh disadvantage stealth check for me Nice, plus 10 with the pass without a trace. <laughs> now, one, one quick point of, uh, of order is that the rest of the group would not have the benefits of pass without a trace while you're gone because they would have to stay within 30 feet of you to gain that benefit is the way they that the spell is written. As, so stayed put as the um, plan was. Yep. All right, so you make it back to the group. All right, guys, we got a card up here. It might be our witch friends small plane cart um, just down the road. They're um, sitting there ready and waiting. They're not moving at all? Yeah, no, they're not they moving doing? at all. I wonder if they know we're already here. Yeah, they might. It seemed like they were watching. I got within about 30 feet as close as I was um, comfortable <clears throat> with getting. And then wonder, circle back. It's clear between here and there. I wonder if those swarms of insects whispered in their ear. I could um, also silence. Uh, we're being pretty quiet. I could silence their location just in case they try to cast a spell on you. So at least it'll prevent like anything, any spells that they use their voice. So as we get closer to the cart, I'll, I'll do that. All right, but I kind of wanted you guys with me to um, step any closer. Let's uh, move forward. It's wet all the way around. You're ready to sog through the mud. Okay, so you guys are going to make your way up to the cart? Yeah. And what what yeah. route are you taking? Hey, hey guys, before we, before we go... Are we going to uh, go up undercover, or are we going to just, you know, assuming they know we're here, are we just going to be outright just... I don't think <laughs> they know we're here yet. I know, so are we going to surprise them? And How about you guys go around, and I'll go up to them, and I'll just ask them for the bones. Um, well, if they are magic users... I'm just throwing it out there that if you stay within 10 feet of me, you have an advantage. All right. A slight advantage. You want to walk, you want, you want to walk with me? I think we all should go together. Well, I'm saying like two of us on the road, then two of us flanking them type of thing. Like stealth. Yeah. Yep. Like like I could, I could go, Stan and I could go behind the cart and you guys walk up to the cart and talk to them. Yep. yep. All right. Don't do anything hostile because they might even know that you're there. So yep. just yep, we'll just try to have a conversation with the fly casual. I, I think that's right. fair. Let's let's do it. Let's go. So who's going stealth and who's going right up to him? I'll go um, up to him. I'll go up to him. Yeah, yeah you I'll go that way. He has, a, and then and then Stan and I'll go behind and just kind of wait and watch. Yeah, I'll take the right side of the road, the same one that I. Look when um, I went over to investigate. All right, you take the left side of the road. All right. All right. If you, if you guys see, uh, let me wave my hand. So here, here's what I'm gonna. Do. We'll go up, ask them for it. If they won't give it to them, I'm gonna count, cast silence on their location so that hopefully Wait, they can't. What are you gonna ask them for? <laughs> The the skull. <laughs> You're just gonna go. Okay. Well, I mean, they might just They're, tell them exactly uh, what we're looking for. I think they would know anyway. I mean, yeah. They're if they're witches, they're either. I think we just walk up to them and say hi and see what they do. Because <laughs> they're probably gonna do that anyway, regardless of what we say to them. Yeah. They're either gonna take offense or not. Right. Yep. So let's try to chant, charm them, and maybe we can bargain with them. All right. Well, if anybody's able gold. to do that, it's you, man. Let's go. Yep. All we right. Hey. Gold, don't we? 
Yeah, I got I got a little bit. Not not much. Mm. We could just go and ask for Mara, directions. Mara raises her eye to that. Her eyebrow to that comment. Well, you said you said gold. I got a lot of gems worth a lot of gold, but it's not gold itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said I, I'm raising my eyebrow. I know how you operate. Let's roll. All right, let's go. Okay. All right, so explain to me who is approaching. So, Cor or Mars, and you're just approaching straight on? Yep. I'm just going to, as I'm approaching, I'm going to. Uh, I'm next to him. I'm just going to, like, hum a tune, which would be like counter. -tr and um, basically, it's going to be used as, like, a, a counter charm, just in case they up front try to do something to us. And then what what are the rest of you doing? I'm I'm passing without a trace with uh Stan's walking along like left of left of, or right of, to the right of those two and I'm to the left of those two and when we get to the cart Stan and I are going to continue to walk towards the back of the cart so that we can kind of watch from behind what's happening. So in order to and benefit Mara, from pass without a trace, you're going to have to maintain a 30-foot distance. Yep. How wide is that road? I thought it was just a two-rut road. It's about 17 feet in some right, spots. So we stick pretty close to the road. Me and one yeah, side I, I mean, I'm just walking along the edge because I don't want to get in that, you know, the, the, the rivers to my left. So I've, i I got to stay out of the water. I'm just kind of walking along the edge there. Yeah. Okay. Stay within 30 feet. Yep. All right. And what about you, Corbin? What's your, what's your walk, piece of this? I'm walking up right beside Mars, and I have my shield out, but not, I don't have my weapons drawn. All right, oh, so here, here we, we go. go. <laughs> so Stan and Mara, just on. point of order. You guys are currently 30 feet apart from each other by yeah. the measurement of the, of the tool. 25, 30 feet, so that's about as far as you can get from each other and still be able to get that benefit. What time of day are we? We're evening now? Mid-afternoon, close to evening. Getting dark yet? Thinking about It's dark, always dark. It? Always dark. Yeah. I might, um, I might cast a dark vision just to make sure I can still see. Uh, if it's not quite dark, I'm going to wait just a little bit just to make sure I get... Um, Eight hours. It might be a long night. I mean, no one gets dark. Will do. Dark. I want everybody to roll initiative. Here we go. <laughs> you guys are getting good initiative, and you're the ones on the sides. Yeah. Got some flack on the sides. All right, Mara, you have the initiative. Um, I'm, I'm, we're gonna, I'm sticking to the plan. I'm just gonna continue walking, um, towards the, towards the cart under the pass without a trace and hope that they're not sensing that, although I'm pretty confident they might be. So I'm kind of, I've got my shield ready. I'm ready to throw some fire if I need to and just walking. I've got to be walking, um, I, I need to be walking even with, uh, Stanley because, no, if I if I start walking ahead of him, then I'm more than thirty feet, and I know I have to stay within his bubble to stay. Oh, right. Undercover. Mm -hmm. He goes right after you. Right, right. right. So actually, so... you know what, Mara, you have uh, because you're exhaustion, you have disadvantage on ability checks, and initiative is an ability check. So go ahead and roll another initiative for me. I forgot about that. Oh. All right, so that's down there. All right, Stan, so you actually have are at the top of the order. Card is ahead of you by about 60, 55, 60 feet. Oh, yeah. we're going that way. We're ahead. All right. Yeah, you guys are north coming from the north. Yep. Um, and just remember that if you move farther than 30 feet from Mara, she will lose the effect of your pass without a trace. I'm going to stay right here and... Um, Knock an arrow and be ready to fire as our um, companions come up. Is any hostility 
toward them from the cart. I'm gonna fire. Okay. And I'm giving. I'm giving. Yeah, and I'm giving you a look like don't, don't. Uh, not until. Um, not until. I'm giving you a look. And I will nod to you, saying I'm not gonna fire until we're provoked. But I'm ready to cover our crew. All right, so if, uh, you guys are all basically approaching, correct? So how how close mm-hmm. would you like to get? Let's do that. How far from oh. the cart do you want to get before you stop Corbin and Marzen? Uh, 20 feet. Yeah. Sounds good. We were going to try to get behind the cart, Dave. All right, well, let's move up. So that's about 20 feet. Right in front of you here is uh, is, a, is water that is washed out the road. So all this dark blue here on either side is water. Swampy, boggy stuff. Your feet are just sloshing through the mud. Stan and Mara, we're, let's get, um, you guys wanna be up here as well. We'll get you right there. Yeah. So you guys are kind of hidden. I'd like you both to roll a quick stealth check. Plus 10, both at disadvantage. All right, so now we're now we're back in order. It's all muddy and nasty. Yeah, super nasty. Where you are, Stan, you're approximately up to your shin in mud, yeah, but still doing a decent warm. job of uh, of staying stealthy with that pass without a trace is really coming in handy. Yeah. All right, so Stan, is that your turn? Is to knock an arrow? Yeah, knock an arrow. Be ready if um, these guys catch any hostility. I'm gonna start shooting. Okay, Corbin. I'm just going to go. Ah, good evening, ladies. How are you this evening? Trying to get their attention. They look over at you. And at this point, you're close enough where you can see that there's these two probably 20-something women dressed in kind of dark robes, cloaks. They both have bonnets or hoods over their head that are brown, maybe a little bit of patterning on them. And they seem to be sort of bundled up as they sit atop this this wagon. The mule that they have looks somewhat emaciated and uh, and is just kind of standing there breathing. You can see the steam coming out of its nostrils as it exhales. And they take notice of you at this point. They at, until now they didn't hadn't seen you. Anything else you want to do on your turn besides call out? I mean, there wasn't much else part of the plan, so yeah, I guess I'll that I'll hold right now. All right, Mara, anything that you want to do? Um, I'm I'm going to uh, can I, I can I prepare a reaction? You can. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, prepare uh, a uh, sacred flame. Okay. Just like ready. And what's to, the trigger? Uh, the trigger will be if there's any hostile action against any of my compadres here. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, that brings us to the women that are atop this carriage, and they one of them looks over at you and says, "We don't like strangers around here. What's your business?" Craig, can I? answer her out of turn yeah you can answer as a reaction oh we're just passing through we're looking for somewhere safe to stay the night my friend here needs to buy some supplies just acting like a a traveler roll a deception check we don't have any supplies around here and this is not a pass through type of Location, this is the end of the road. You best turn around and head back north. That's the end of their turn. Marzen? Pretty sure you guys do have the supplies we're looking for. It would be, uh, you know, like a dragon school, yay big. I'm going to kind of hold my hand. What's up? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. We were sent here... Uh, told that you guys might have it, and uh, we're here to bargain for it. (laughs) 
the 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 one that has been talking to you starts laughing. <laughs> 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 And I need you to roll, uh, Mars, and I need you to roll a wisdom save. Plus five because he's standing next to me, but that's not what's So what's the total? Seven? Yeah. Perfect. All right. You fall to the ground to, and into the mud, and just right next to Corbin, you watch your friend fall into the mud, and you start... Uh, laughing hysterically. And they're laughing too. <laughs> How amusing! Oh, it's hilarious. So you are incapacitated and unable to get up. Great. Do that. All right, so that uh, was their reaction. So Stan, you just watch as your friend Marzen strangely <laughs> falls to the ground and is just laughing his ass off at whatever... You're not sure what the joke was. Right. And I don't understand, but I grow more and more uneasy. Yeah, it doesn't um, trigger your your reaction, however, because it wasn't an outright attack of any sort that you would be able to detect. So, I, um, But it is your turn, so you can do whatever you want on your turn. Yeah. I slog forward real quietly further into the mud, even though I'm, like, in getting close to over my knees now. Yeah, that, that beast right there, you're in your in yeah. your knees. You can only move 15 feet total because you're at you're in uh, difficult terrain. So you have five, yeah. five more feet of movement. And I do, if you're stealthy, I need you to make a stealth check at disadvantage. Okay. I'm, and I'm uh, still looking over at Mara and making sure I'm within 30 feet. I think I'm safe there. Can you confirm? But be careful to not go too far. You are. You're 25 feet, it looks like to me. All right, I'm staying there, and I'm, I'm working to get a straight shot to anybody at the cart that I need to. So I'm working to... Um, Make a straight line of fire. Yeah, from your from your spot right there, there's nothing obstructing a shot at yeah. either of the two women that are sitting up on top of this cart. All right, um, I'm standing there, and I'm still holding with the bow that's ready to roll. Okay, and they they don't. It doesn't appear as though they've noticed you. Just FYI. All right, Corbin, your friend drops to the ground next to you, laughing hysterically, rolling around in the mud. <laughs> I also shake my head and just, man, what are you guys doing? Come on here. Oh, well, what are we doing? That was not <laughs> so amusing. <laughs> so amusing. What have you done to my friend? What? How rude. I'm going to move closer to their mule. As you do, uh, one of the witches says, Told you to turn around and head back north. Uh, I'm not one to take directions too well. Which way did you say the inn was? You looking and... for some place to sleep, are ya? Yeah, sure. And um, I'm going to grab the reins of their mule. Roll an animal handling check. So this is your action, is to grab the reins. So go ahead and roll animal handling. <laughs> the the mule rears away from you, and you you miss the reins. All right. Anything else? Um. Seems like your plan's going off without a hitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, did we have a plan? I mean, I don't. That was pretty much it. This is D and D. I love it. Pretty much there. Yeah. Okay. Um, love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. We're, we're definitely distracted. Oh, I can't them. use that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be the end of your turn. You... Yeah, that's the end. I don't have a bonus action I want to use right now. Okay, Mara. You're not sure what the hell's going on, but Marzin is rolling around in the ground, laughing his ass off right now. 
And I know, I know that something's not right there. I mean, I would know enough about. Well, it's pretty strange. Well, but I, you know, having the ability to do spells myself, it would seem Mm. to me that I would know that something is not right. Maybe. Roll an Arcana check. A disadvantage? Yep. Thanks for the reminder. This isn't any sort of spell that you've ever seen. But it does right. it does seem very out of character for Marzen to just start rolling around in the mud laughing. It does. So it does. from that you gain a bit of insight. Yeah, yeah. Um then um I am going to uh I'm going to uh cast a detect magic just to confirm. You cast detect magic and Within the radius of 30 feet, you do not detect any magical properties. Okay. If I can possibly um, catch her eye, I will try to get her to move forward. Yeah, that's that was my next move. I'm gonna I'm gonna go past Mars and and. Uh, I guess I would say the only she... magical essence that you detect is the sword that Cor- or that Corbin is carrying. Got it. That's given off a massive magic glow. Got it. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to carry on. I'm going to move forward even with Corbin here so I I can kind of Yeah, you have 15 eye. feet of movement total and then roll a stealth check at disadvantage. Okay. 1 2 3 That about right. I it's hard for me to see the grid. Have I gone too far? Okay, hold on a no, second. No, that's fine. That's perfect. Okay. okay. Um and I you said stealth with disadvantage? Correct. Ooh. Still plus ten, because you're yeah, yeah, you're within. All right, um, great. End of your turn brings us to the the lovely ladies in the cart, and the one that asked you, Corbin, if you were looking for a place to sleep. You see her reach into her pocket and take out a pinch of sand and some rose petals and grinds it up in her hand as she's looking right at you and I need you to make a Oh, it's not a, it's not a save. She's going to cast sleep. No, it's just a charm. Um this is a it's no, well, it's not it a it's really... not a saving throw so you wouldn't get your bonus. Um, um, due to my fey ancestry, I can't be put to sleep by magic. Oh, all right. Well, she's she's still she's still gonna attempt because oh, she doesn't know that. So she's gonna go ahead and try. And it doesn't have any effect on you whatsoever. <laughs> that, that was weird. What was that? That was awesome. Um, what are you trying to do? Yeah, We're just trying to pass through here. You guys are playing games. <laughs> You're not welcome here. And the other one, as seeing that you reached out for the reins, which is somewhat of an aggressive movement, she is going to, you see this sickening greenish energy that lashes out towards you from her hand. And I'm throwing up a warding flare right now. Okay. So you throw up a warding flare and there's this flash of light So it is a six to hit. That does not hit. So she misses you with a ray of sickness. And that, let's see, that is the end of their turn. Brings us to Marzen. Hey, Marzen, you it, need it, to make a, a saving throw wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. Right. Plus five, because he's still next to me. Yep, you're still laughing. Yeah, it's still oh fucking hilarious, dude. Or playing with yeah. the shit. Mm-hmm. All right, Stan. You see uh, your friend Mars is still laughing on the ground, and you did see a green, sickening green flash of energy try to grasp your, your friend Corbin, but miss. Yeah, and I almost fired, but I saw that it missed. Um... Help me out with distance. How close can I get to that cart and still... It's 30 feet to the cart from where you are. 
If I go all the way to the car to my 30, still 30 feet from Mara. You can only move 15 feet. Oh, because it's difficult terrain. Correct. All right. I want to move 15 toward the cart. Okay. Five and 15. Are you moving so stealthily or are you moving normally? Yeah, I'm moving stealthily. Okay. So you'd probably, you'd only be able to move half of that then. So you'd be able to move 10 feet. So move, oh, just move shit. back one more box. Not very much movement, Dave. That also keeps you within 30 feet of the rest of your companions, aside from... Well, even Marzen is within 30 feet. All right, and then I want to scour the shit out of the cart, <clears> out of that <throat> horse. I'm looking for arrows. I'm looking for anything I can steal. Okay. Um, roll a perception Man. check. I don't know why I still have disadvantage on. That's all right. We'll go with the one on the left. It looks like pretty standard tack for the yeah. for the hitch. Um, you don't even see anything in the cart except for these two women that are just standing there or sitting there. Excuse me. All right, I still got my arrow knocked and ready to roll in case I need to fire as a reaction for any hostility that um, I put toward my crew. Okay, <laughs> comes to Corbin. All right, I considered that pretty hostile. Um, which one shot at me? Um, it was this one right Both here, of them. the one, Both of them the really one on the left. Something. Going after him. Six. Uh, you only have fifteen feet of movement. Oh, I do. Yep. Okay. So I was here. I'm gonna just move up one, two, three. Stay back, I tell you. Stay back, brigand. I'm gonna pull my sword. Which sword? Uh, my standard sword. Ooh. That was not very nice. I'm just going to hold it here. Yeah, there's I'm not much, not like much more you can do, really. No. Uh, Mara. Um, I'm going to move my 15, which would put me just about even with Corbin here. Hold on a second. Sure, and stay with them. And... And me. Yep. Yep, I think I'm good here. Let's see. Good. Great. Um, and then, are you moving uh, stealthily, or are you just moving? At this point, I'm I'm just assuming that you know we're 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 walking slowly into battle here. I'm I'm not going to bother with any stealth at Got this it. point. Okay. Um, so uh, the um, the the one that that uh, the spell. I'm sorry. That was this one. Mm -hmm. You're the one on the left. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna blind her. Yeah. So. Finally, a little bit of action. Okay. So you cast blind. Mm-hmm. And I need to make a con save. I rolled a natural twenty. Of course oh, you did. Man. Of course you did. <laughs> uh, then I'm just gonna. Hold action. I'm, I I don't know if they sensed me throwing magic at them or not, and I want to wait and see if they did. They definitely know well, where that came from, and they they've seen you approach now. So and that that was an action. That was your action, correct? Then I guess I'm 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 I guess I'm ready and waiting for whatever's going to come my way. <laughs> All right. So that brings us to ready. the these two ladies that you're accosting on the road. <laughs> Just minding their own business, having yeah, a conversation yeah. out in the out in the swamp. Maybe seal. You guys are approaching up. them, and you're watching, and all, suddenly, you watch as they disappear. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! I roll a perception check. I did not mean for the cart to disappear. However, <laughs> yeah, go ahead Stan. and roll a perception check if you'd like. Stan saying, "What the." Fuck. Actually, you don't need to. You you'll you won't be able to see them. But they, still they both disappear. Still oh, that's uncontrollable. Um, it's your turn, Marzen. So you can use a you can make a uh, wisdom save. Plus, uh, do you have the plus five on that one or no? Uh, I don't know. Do I, Corbin? I don't think so. It's 10 feet, so he's too far away. So you're still laughing. All right. 
All right, let's get Marzen into this cart. Let's get on the cart and have the have the mule take us back to where he came from. Or she. I haven't looked underneath to check. <laughs> Stan, is there anything that you want to do? You you watch as these two women disappear from the yeah, cart. I say, what the hell? Um my perception said um I have no idea what just happened. I want to move stealthily to spots and be ready to fire. Um, so you, if you're going to move stealthily, you can only move 10 feet total. I don't know. I can't remember how much yeah, you just moved. And then roll, go ahead and roll a stealth check for me. Plus, uh, <clears throat> plus 10 with the pass without a trace. You're, you're yep. looking good. Corbin. You watch these two women disappear from the cart. And I'm still holding my movement to fire. You're gonna hostility. You're gonna well you used your, your well, yeah, okay, sure. You can you, you can ready an action. Corbin. I'm just gonna take a swipe of my sword right through that cart just to see if they're just invisible. Okay. Ooh. Roll roll to hit. Music day. Yeah, your your sword just slashes through air and makes no contact. Where did they go? Uh, Mara. Guys, um, I don't know where they went, but let's let's go get Mars Marzen and put him on this cart and take the cart through this muck instead of us having to walk through it at all. Drive the cart. Well, I guess they know we're here. Uh, I mean, they, they could be anywhere around us right now, but we might as well carry on as if and just yeah. keep our eyes open. Never mind. I won't drive the cart. They don't know I'm here. I'll follow them along the side. Is that the end of your turn, Mara? Are you going to just, gonna, you're just gonna, giving orders? Or go, is... No, I'm going to go towards Marzen, or I'm going to go towards Marzen and, and go to the mule to have the mule hopefully follow me. I don't know if, if he will, but I'm going to give it a try and uh, go over to Marzen to help, you know, pick him up and move, get him onto the cart. That's going to be the, the goal here. Okay. So go ahead and move your 15 feet. Yep. And then roll an animal handling check. You look sure back as you, that. as you do the tick, tick, tick to the mule and you just see it go <laughs> and it doesn't move. Oh, so that's yeah. how we're going to be, huh? Right. All and then right. Uh, and then I am going to ready an action. I'm going to I am going to ready a sacred flame uh, just in case. And what's the trigger? Um if they reappear. Just All right. disappeared. Marzen, back to you. No, you're still uncontrollable oh laughter. <laughs> Doing it. Terrible, I'll say. Laughing stock of the session, that's for sure. Just laughing. Just ridiculous. It's the funniest thing you've ever heard. Yes. All right, Stan. All right. Um, I'll go up to the mule and try animal handling. What, so what are you trying I'll to probably, do? What's your objective? I'll move one... To and get the mule to let's see town is back the other way, right? I want to turn the mule around and go back the other way down the road. I think that's what we're looking to do. And how do you do that? How do you do that, Stan? Like, what's the actual action that you're taking? Um, come up to the mule and say, "Hey, we're going this way." friends and you're gonna haul my laughing buddy into town so you're just talking to the mule yeah all right um <laughs> roll a animal handling check there we go <laughs> oh my <laughs> god all right you have to be real nice yeah um yeah it looks at you and just kind of you hear my buddy nudges you it kind of nudges you with its head you get the sense that it likes you. Yep. Everybody loves Dan. 
<laughs> oh, that's funny. Stan, um, as the mule touches you, you see just faint glow of green energy over your shoulder. Corbin, you see it erupt from out of nowhere and it smashes into Stan and wraps around him. I rolled a 19 to hit. Does that hit Stan? What's your armor class? Armor class is 17. Okay. Um, so you please make a constitution saving throw. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so you take you nine, you take nine points of poison damage and you are poisoned until the end of your next turn. That means that you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. The mule mauled me? No, you got shot in the back by something. Something green, huh? That brings us to Corbin. Um, so did I see that as coming from this witch that just popped up um, here? Roll a perception check. You may or may not have. No, oh, you didn't. Are you rolls tonight um i turn around i see Stan stan crumple <laughs> um i don't know if he crumpled but he did get hit with this strange greenish greenish energy and yeah. he looks he looks like he's sick his face is pale he looks a little uneasy on his legs like his knees are starting to shake a little bit um that wouldn't have caused me to fire my arrow that i was ready right um no because you wouldn't have you wouldn't have seen the attack come in yeah and and can i there would be no target can i can i see this woman you're on the other side of the mule walking towards marzen so you don't see any of that happen right and so based on my perception role i can't see her either correct oh my god you're not looking in her direction you didn't see where it came from I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. Well, you see her, you look over at Stan, you see your friend, like, all of a sudden, like, ill, wavering, yeah. you know, so almost I'll, on the I'm, verge of vomiting. I'm going to run up to Stan. I'm going to move up here. Okay, you move 15 yeah. feet closer to Stan. And what, yep. what kind of action do you take? Okay, I just want to get closer to Stan so that he can, you know, benefit from my aura. Okay, and... so you kind of reach out, put a hand on his, on his shoulder, like, what's up, buddy? Yeah, and that's it. All right, Mara. Guys, let's get Marzen and get out of here. And I'm... Let's... let's uh, I, we've got the mule following us. Let's Let's go. I'm going to I'm going to go towards Marzen here and uh I'm going to grab him and drag him another like 5 feet in this direction so that we're both right where my token currently is now. I think that that's all within my movement okay. ability. So you're going to do <clears throat> you, you move up to Marzen. Yep. And then I, I'm grab him by the collar, and I'm I'm gonna try to drag him towards the cart. Okay, so you can get to him, and uh, you can try to pick him up off the ground this round. I'm I'm not gonna try to pick him up. I'm just gonna try to because I'm small. I'm just gonna I'm gonna drag him. Oh, got it. I'm All just, right, so you I'm, just grab I'm him. I'm like, I'm grab him, grab him by the collar, by the cowl, by the neck, whatever yeah. of his of his garment, and I'm pulling him. Mm -hmm. I'm dragging him along the ground here. I want to try to drag him this far. I, I think that's as far as I can go, actually. Um, roll a strength check for me at disadvantage. That's You're not able to budge him this round. Uh, you grab him and you start pulling on yep. him, but he's in the mud and it's he's heavy. Okay. All right, so 
brings us to this lady here, right down here at the southern end of the map. Yep. She's going to yell out, you turn around and leave us. We don't like your kind. And then she's going to start walking into the as fast as she can, which is pretty slow. And the other one is going to do this. The other one. Where's the other one? Still All invisible. Right. It's magic. Brings us to Marzen. Marzen, roll a wisdom save. Roll well. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> I'm <not> laughing. <laughs> No. Is it four fail safe now? Yeah. That's, oh, I've never god. seen this spell work so well. Dude, yeah. what the fuck is going Dude, on, man? What's with this game breaking spell, Dave? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it has nothing to do with the spell as much as it has to do with those shitty no dice. Uh, well, you know, uh, if I, know. I if I was up, I would just, I'll just be in the, the hut anyways. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. That's really yeah. funny. Just make a hut and say fuck it. He can't, he's paralyzed. With laughter. Mm -hmm. Okay, Stan, you uh, you are in rough shape right now, sir. So you can you can try to do whatever you want to try to do, but you are poisoned until the end of your turn. So you have disadvantage on attack and ability checks. I would like to hop on the horse and ride it the hell out of here. The hop on the mule. Okay, go ahead and roll an animal handling check with disadvantage. And I do it. Oh, Christ. Yeah, you get up on top of the horse. You just yes. climb your <laughs> yes, sick ass on. poison body here. up on. You're just really bonded with this mule. <laughs> and uh, everybody, get on the wagon. Hop on. We're getting out of here. So you're able to get up on the mule. That's uh, ten feet of movement. <laughs> So you're up on the mule this round. Yes. That brings us to Corbin. And I if really I don't. have anything left, I will be ready to fire an arrow at anybody that um, gets in our case. But I have a feeling that that's my movement. I don't, I don't know what the point of running away at this point is, but... Well, just um, get off I'm the gonna road. See, yeah, I'm going to see people moving back and do the same. But I'm not getting on that horse. I moved three, 15 feet. Mara, you want to continue to try to drag Mars in? No, oh, I'm I'm trying to catch the eye of Stan and and Corbin. You guys come here, and then I'm going to uh, uh, touch uh, Mars in at, with a dispel magic. Okay. Dave is measuring. Yeah, you cast Dispel Magic. Dispel and Magic, Mars yeah. and the magical effect that has been causing you to laugh uncontrollably ends. All right, I think that's the end of your turn, Mara. Mm hmm Okay. Let's see. Nobody's watching, but this lady <laughs> turns around and sees you jump on her mule, and she is going to... I'm still a past frigid the beam of blue white light streaks across the marsh from her position towards Stan. And can I still see her, see Dave? You, well, you could roll a perception check, sure. Uh, 21 to hit you, Stan, for eight cold damage. It just cracks out this bolt of blue energy. You take eight? Yep. Corbin, you just hear this crack snap as as your friend gets blasted up on the mule. We need to stop running away from these two, I'm pretty sure. What's your armor class, Mara? 16. Uh, I rolled a 15, so a ray of frost comes flying in your direction from another location, and it misses you. But it does so reveal this other this other woman. So both of them are now visible. Brings us back to Marzen. Marzen, your gut just hurts from laughing so hard. 
back. Did, man, they're both back. I was excited because I got to see Invisible and everything, and now I can't even use it. <laughs> All right, I... Are they within 20 feet of each other? Nope. Nope. Well, no. All right, I'm going to cast Greater Invisibility on myself. Okay. To play uh, this game. So I'm just going to pop out, go Invisible, then... Um, going to move um, would my movement be you still have sure. on difficult it, terrain so you have half movement is it the whole field or just where we're located at everywhere all right I go five ten fifteen then I'm gonna give you a little ninja icon since you're invisible. Yeah, could I take um could I take an action? Well you use an action to turn hide? invisible. So I, I wouldn't be able to hide too with that? No, you're hide just, hide as an action. Hide. Well you can. You just because you're invisible doesn't mean they don't know you're there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially right, if they um, can see your feet. Sloshing around in the mud. Slosh. Yep. All right, that's it. Okay. Yeah, you can do that next turn, but it would take you an action. Yep, got it. All right, Stan, you just got <clears> nailed <throat> in the back with a blast of frost energy. Uh, I'm still feeling at one with the mule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell him, giddy up, spin that cart the fuck around. Let's up our invisible friend and <laughs> head back down the road. At the back of the way we came? No. Forward um, to the, what would it be? Southeast. <laughs> Alright, roll an anim animal handling check for me. Oh, cool. <laughs> I like animal handling checks. So you're going to do like a three point, like, reverse maneuver here? with. The... <laughs> <laughs> you're able to get it to about there. <laughs> and then I want to <sighs> well that's your action so just I've still been waiting itching to fire this arrow too yeah that's over you can't you can't take actions <laughs> and still have a readied action that's not how it works okay so it's just checking yeah I mean it's, it's not that you don't have an arrow still in your well actually you'd probably have to do something to be able to jump on a horse with a bow. So, anyways, you uh, you take your action to try to turn this horse around. That brings us to Corbin. Uh, can I still say something? Yeah, absolutely. Get the fuck on this cart. Let's get out of here. I got this mule. Come on, let's roll. <laughs> We're not gonna be. A... <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna run up one, two and take cover behind the cart and um yep yeah, that's it i'm just gonna stay right here are you gonna try to hide or anything or ready an action yeah, I'm, gonna try or... to, I'm gonna try to like hide i don't have any ranged attacks so okay. i can't do anything go ahead and roll a stealth and everybody's check for running me. in the wrong direction yeah. <laughs> all right You feel like you've got good cover and that you might even be hidden. Great. That brings us to Mara. Mara, now you can see both of these women having and been the having been unburdened of their their precious mule that they raised from a from just a small pony. They don't look happy. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, and 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 the horse is in my way, right? Of, mm -hmm. of really much of anything at this point yeah we're from where you are you'd be yeah they would be obscured all right um so I mean, you I'm might have a to... shot at this one down here down here yeah i'm trying to ping but it's not pinging she's one about, to the left she's about Lower 40 left. feet away from you the other one would be behind cover based on where the where the mule is yeah 45 all mm -hmm. right so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I think it might be time for a scorching ray to, uh, our, um, hold on a second. Let me, this one right here. Okay. So, uh, scorching ray. Uh, 
Whoa. Um, yeah, all three of them hit. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. And she goes up in a ball of fire and just falls and crumples to the ground in a heap of ashes and burning flesh. And her, and the other, her, her sister screams. Ah! All right. Is that the end of your we turn? Tried, we tried to be nice. <laughs> They've already been attacking us. I don't think we need to reason with them. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I, I'm making a point, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to this woman who just watched her sister get murdered by these strangers. <laughs> you just if if you were close enough, which you're not, you'd see tears starting to run down her face. I would feel bad, but I can't see her. <laughs> Mara Roll a wisdom saving throw for me. Um, is this a warding flare situation? Nope. All right. I'm sorry. Was that supposed to be at disadvantage? Nope. Wisdom, your saving throws are not at disadvantage, but okay. you okay. do fail. You drop into the mud, laughing hysterically. <laughs> oh, jeez. Rolling around <laughs> in the mud. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> All right, and then, yep, that's happening. Corbin, what is your armor class? Um, 18, I believe. Yeah, 18. Successful, I rolled an 18. Um, you take 11 poison damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, let's see. Is that with, with these rolls tonight? Do you get the benefit of your uh, plus five? It's already added in. Oh, it I'm is? Plus seven to constitution. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. You are poisoned. <laughs> oh, you you start to suffer the effects that Stan was suffering, and so you'll be poisoned until the end of your next turn. Um, let's see. How much damage did you say I took that first time? You took 11. Okay. As you're trying to steal their precious mule, Stan, another one of these strange greenish energy bolts comes in your direction, but it misses with a six, flies past yeah. you. Flies past. How dare you attack our sister? That brings us to Marzen. Um, you are currently invisible. There's a lot of freaking witches now, guys. Start killing something. Um, that one's taking damage, right? You wouldn't know. You were busy laughing. All right. Well, I'm going to attack it and with uh, Toll the Dead. Mm -hmm. Is that a saving throw? Uh, wisdom save. Got it. 17. Saves, so nothing. Yeah, I'm just going to stay put then. Or I'm going to actually move 15 feet up, actually. 5, 10, 15. My, half my movement. Actually, I'm going to go one arc. 5, 10, 15. So 5, 10, 15. Just in case they do a fireball on the cart. <laughs> All yeah. right, that's it. And you're just moving as at normal speed, obviously, if you're moving 15 feet. So let me just see if they notice you. Ooh, all right. Uh, Stan. I'm going to continue with this mule. So you're still trying to turn it? Kind of Go ahead thinking and roll. about hopping off, but I'm going to... Can't, you can't move the mule and attack, just so you know. I know. Roll okay. an animal handling check. Two. Get this mule turned around. Nine. Disadvantage yeah, because I'm uh, disadvantaged. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't think you're disadvantaged. I don't. You're not think poisoned I'm anymore, so it would be a nineteen. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're able to get it turned around about right there. I'm going to okay. holler out to the rest of my crew. This is the way we're looking to go, right? Okay. Uh, Corbin, you actually um, probably no. had to move out of the way a little bit. Yeah, so what I would have been maybe like here? Is that okay? Sure. All right. Absolutely. I'm probably still obscured because of Pass Without a Trace, where they probably don't know what the hell Actually, you know what? On. Stan, give me, uh, you've been hit a couple times, at least twice, so go ahead and roll two constitution saving throws for me real quick. I like the sound of that, dude. I know. I think I still got disadvantage on, so... Yeah, you do, that's okay, I'll take the one on the left. Yep, you've still got Pass Without a Trace going. Okay. Alright, um, could I, like, hop over this part of the mule onto the other side, like, to get here? You could get right here, sure. With my full movement? Uh, with 15 feet of movement. And, alright, I'm just gonna have to hold. Okay, Mara, this is a very strange combat. Okay. Yeah. It is. Um, I'm still laughing, right? So I have to yeah, do Yeah, make wisdom. a wisdom save. It's messed up. Ooh, that's nice. At the end of your turn, you're able to stop laughing, but you are just covered <coughs> in mud. Camouflage. Is that, and that's my action? Yep, that's your turn. All right. Okay, so... Corbin... And she is going to reach up and attack Stan's leg with a claw. And I'm going to throw a warding flare up. Okay, so that'll be a disadvantage. Uh, I rolled an 8, so she misses. Mara, I rolled an 18 to hit you with a ray of frost. What's your armor and class? That's, and that's not anything I can see coming, correct? Um, because if if I can see it coming, I've got another warding flare in my back pocket. I want to put it up. All right. Uh, it's still an 18. I rolled two 18s. So uh, All right. it still hits you for eight cold. And actually, there's one behind you that's also going to shoot at you. You can use your warding flare if you want to. Uh, yeah. I'm going to use my, um, my last one here. Okay, so that one, I think, misses with a 13. Okay. And this one here is also going to fire at you, Mara. With a 21 to hit. I'm sorry, which one? The one off to the northwest. Okay. Uh, two cold damage only. Okay. So where are you at right now with hit points? 50. Okay. Um, that's their turn. Marzen. Mr. Invisible. Uh, told the dead on this one. Okay. Save. Nine. All right. So failed. Such a great spell. Just the flavor of it is cool so the one on the right is if it's taken damage so then the one on the left is if it hasn't taken damage got it then i'm going to move 5 10 15 and that's it stan there's uh, a woman at your leg clawing at you Get off my pony! <laughs> Thief! <laughs> That's, um... <clears throat> you ping the one that is um, on my leg. The one that's right okay. next to your token. I would like to, um... Cast Hunter's Mark on that one. So you use your bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark. And then what are you going to do? I would like to shoot it with a longbow arrow. Okay, it'll be at disadvantage because it's within five feet. Uh, 15 hits. 
for how much? 12 damage. And then that one has taken damage. It has before, not right? taken damage. Okay. But it just took a lot of damage there. It's just clawing at your leg, and you look, you just kind of look over at it and just release an arrow right into its chest. <laughs> yeah. ah, my pony. <laughs> Anything then, else, Stan? My yeah, I would pony. like to take a second attack with another longbow arrow. And because it's close, it's probably disadvantage. Yep, it still hits though. And you fire a second arrow into her chest and she slumps to the ground. Done? Yep, sure looks like it. Brings us to Corbin. Um, here I am too far away from everything again to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I've got the upper hand a little bit. No, you don't. Um, I don't know. I've shut, I've shut you guys down quite a bit this combat, yeah, I will say. And very awkward and spread out. And yep. It's been effed up, but I don't think you have the upper hand. I can only move 15 feet, too, on top of it. It's yep. like just thick actually, mud. I'm going to take a dash action and just keep going after this one I see down here. Okay, so you can move another 15. One, two, three. Okay. I'm done. All right, Mara. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to... Taking a couple of blasts to... from behind you and off to the side. This this one right here has already gotten damage, right, from mm -hmm. Marzen. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do Scorching Ray again. Okay. I'm going to hit this. I want to hit this one first. Um, see what kind of damage it does, and then move to this one, depending on what happens here. Hmm. I would say that you probably need to make that decision as you cast the spell, rather than waiting, because okay. it all happens in sequence. Okay. Great. Um, great. Well, I'm still. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit this one twice. Okay. And then, and and then this one, the one that's left. Okay. All right. Wow. God, I love that spell. Yeah, you always do very well with it. So the first two hit this one up here mm -hmm. and just completely fry this thing into just a crispy critter. And then the third one you fire at this one over here. Yeah, that one hits as well. <whistles> Big damage. Awesome. Big damage. All right. Any movement or a bonus action, Mara? Uh, no bonus action. Um, I am going to move towards... No, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay right here. All right. That brings us to their turn. This one up here sees her sister go down. She is going to loose another ray of sickness at you, Mara. Uh, let's see what happens. 22 to hit. You are taking 21 poison damage. I rolled really good on this one. Holy crap. Yep. And I need you to make a con save. God, that's a pretty good spell. Ooh, you are poisoned until the end of your next turn so that you get overtaken by this nauseous feeling and disorientation and you kind of stagger and stumble a little bit and this one down here corbin sees you coming she's gonna fire a ray of frost at you seven to hit she misses and then she is going to move away from you <laughs> jesus marzen freaking haven't took one lick of damage yet. All right, no, I'm, uh, done much either. Hey, I did some damage. I was laughing for a while. Um, wisdom save for this guy. I'm gonna toll the dead. Sixteen's the magic number. Fails. Fourteen. All right. So on the right, since it took damage. Oh. Wow. Whoa. What? Nice. Holy shit. Nice roll. Oh, yeah, that's Rolled amazing. 11 and a 12. Yeah. Hey, how, how does Toll the Dead work again? 
It's um, necrotic damage. So there's for? this loud gong, basically, that okay. you hear just and, and this white okay. hand I'm... reverberates across the the marsh, and yeah, just, necrotic energy up. fires out and envelops this woman, and she just you can just almost see like her head squeeze in and then just burst. She goes down and falls into the into the water and mud. Anything else, Marzen? Uh, I'll stay put. Stan. Oh Jesus! I want to move my um, hunter's mark over to the other witch, and then fire at her. Which one? One to the southwest. Okay, down here. Yes, move the hunter's mark and make a bow shot to her. Okay, roll the hitter. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll hunter's mark damage. Yep. She's taken damage, so she nope, has, she has not. Nope, she has not. Nope, she sure has not. Oh, that's the first one, huh? So um, she takes an arrow in the chest. <laughs> Our pony! <laughs> Can I move that pony forward? You would need to use your action to give it a command, which you've already taken an, an attack action, so no. Okay, then I want to take a bonus attack and shoot at her one more time. So it's your extra attack, you mean? Yeah, it's my yep. extra attack. Go ahead. Yep, that hits. And that is all you needed to drop her to the ground. Ah, oh, great. All right. Uh, anything else from you? Uh, I'm interested to get two arrows back, one from each of the witches. All right, well, you're going to have to wait because you're on top of a pony right now. If I'm on top of a pony. Um, oh. I could yell to my companions, hey, if you can pull those arrows out of those two witches, that would be awesome. So at this point, uh, the initiative order ends. And you don't see any more combatants on the field. So what would you guys like to do at this point? There are two fully scorched women that have been burned to crisps laying in the, in the water. And then a couple others that have been pierced with arrows. And one with I'd a like head to, that exploded up here. I'd like to send my compatriots over to... Um pick up arrows from them or any other I'll... riches that I might be able to get from them. Good. I'll go, yeah, I'll, I'll go grab the arrows from this corpse up here. Sure, you're able to recover the four arrows. Um, Mara, I... you are feeling extremely ill. Stan, you feel terrible as well. And Corbin, yeah, did I you get terrible. poisoned as well? Um, I don't know. I got hit with something. can't remember yeah, what Yeah, I think you did. So the three yeah. of you have are feeling extremely uneasy at this point. Yeah, guys, um, I think we and Marzen need is to... nowhere to be found. He, he's gone. He's invisible. Could I search the body of this one real quickly? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I want to I wanna, I wanna do the same for these two. I'm, I want to look them over and see if they've got any potions or spell casting stuff on them, anything like that. This one. Yeah, each of them has a dagger. Right. Uh, each of them has a spell components pouch that has things like ground crickets and uh, different herbs and sa pinches of sand and all kinds of little spell components. Awesome! I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the pouch off of this one and this one and offer the daggers to whoever on my crew wants them. Oh, I gonna, want a dagger. I'm gonna grab the pouch from this one down by me. Okay. I would like to grab a pouch from one to sure i would actually could i i want to take the clothes off of one yeah you can that, you can take the clothes and uh which hat and stuff should we hide yeah, these that, bodies that's, that's a yeah, really good idea hide the bodies bars and that's a great idea i'm gonna i'm gonna do the same with this one i'm gonna i'm gonna take i'm gonna take her clothes that's a really good idea mars and thank you so I'm only gonna... only three of them are have clothes that are salvageable. Two of them are right. totally singed and burned to a crisp. Uh, so stay with my same clothes, and I will work to um, 
get this donkey mule under control and working for us. Roll a hand animal handling right check in. for me, Dan. Yeah, it takes some time. This thing is, its initial uh, warmth warming up to you is sort of, it's its stubborn in terms of moving it around, but you are able to yeah. get it placed more appropriately in the direction of the southern southern trek. Could I cast a uh, see invisible just to make sure, sure. that we're clear? Yeah. Make Go sure ahead I don't and see any other ones. Mark it down off your sheet. All right. Guys, I think we... I, I think we need to hunker down in the hut and heal ourselves and 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 uh because I think we've got a big something waiting for us down the road here. Should we hide these bodies, do you think? Yeah, let's put them in the dome. Put them in the what? You got room. Put them in the hut. Drag All right. Their, drag their corpses in the hut. Should we get away from this area though to do the hut or I don't, I don't, I don't know why we, we even would bother. Yeah, I'm kind of with Mara. It's like if we I mean, move, they're, they're just going to see a muddy prints and like right. stuff anyways. So. And if these and two it, don't go back tonight, like maybe there's, they're the watch or something, you know? Yeah, Somebody and if, might and. Come looking for them. What about setting it off the trail like right here then? Isn't that where the river is? Mm, that's the marsh. No, the river is off to the eastern edge. Oh, sorry. But everything is wa everything is mud and water, everywhere. Does that not dry out inside of the hut? Yeah, it's dry and comfortable. So it doesn't really matter. But yeah, let's get off the road. But I'll if say, it looks, what about just setting up like right here, and that way we could see if anyone comes looking for them too, and we could ambush them. I think that's a good idea, and and it'll almost look like we disappeared because there won't be any well, footprints going away, right? They'll they'll see the dome though. Are yeah, you still invisible, Marza? Yeah, I haven't came out of it yet. I'm just talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't see him. He's just having a chat with you all of a sudden. Yeah, he's getting an eye roll from me. Show off. All right, I'm just dragging the other body this way, and I'm going to give Stan his arrow. So where do you want the bodies? I'm um, just pulling this one that was down south real far up towards the cart. Okay. Yeah, like pile pile them all up kind of here, all of them. I'll do the same. So a couple, My... of, them, a couple of them are naked. Two of them are uh, singed. Well, well they, got, they, got, they got undergarments on at least. Oh, we don't know that. Um, let's see. <laughs> no, you do now. <laughs> one of them does. <laughs> the other one does not. All right. I'm also. I'm gonna. I'm gonna speak to the one that's unclothed. <laughs> I'm gonna cast. Um, speak with dead. So are you casting that before you cast the hut? Yeah. What well, I could cast. I could cast it inside the hut. All right, here's what we're going to do. You have killed five women that you encountered on the road after trying to steal their their cart. And what we'll do is we'll end here for the night. All right. And we'll come back next time, and then we can go from there. So at this point, the, the hut has not been cast. And uh, you're just about to sit down to cast Speak with the Dead. Sound good? Got it. Yep. All right, sweet. Okay. <laughs> Morally questionable. Morally questionable. <laughs> I don't know. These, these tokens look a lot like witches, and they, they acted a lot like witches, and we're in a place filled with witches, so I'm pretty are, sure they are witches. Are all the bodies, are all 20-year-old... <laughs> Female yeah, they're still, all they're all, all good like looking. in the I don't I mean they're Barovian women in their mid twenties. Yeah, you, you guys are animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just You're laughing, laughing for a while. All right. Good luck all right. to us all. All right, guys. Great job. Yep. All right. All right. You, you killed a bunch Thanks, of baby. ladies and stole their pony. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice wrote it like a boss. Nice job. Okay. We'll see what happens next time. Good night, everybody. Yep. Thanks a lot. All that was right. fun. Good night. Yep. Good night. Take care. Good night. All right. All right. Yep. Bye. Later.